Hello, everyone. I'm Uygar Karaca, a Basket News um, contributor, and we are here with the Alba Berlin Sporting uh, Director, Imar Ojeda. Um, Mr. Ojeda, welcome, and we are happy to um, see you here. All, all good? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All good. Thank you very much for having me. Okay. Um, then let's start uh, with the hot topics. Today, I saw just a, a big news uh, about uh, the head coaching position. Right now, um, I think Aito Garcia Reneses uh, is no longer the Alba Berlin head coach, but um, it's his uh, former assistant, Israel Gonzalez, uh, is the new head coach. So congratulations for that. It was a decision mm -hmm. that um, took you. a long time. Um, how do you comment on this process? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. Um, we have had uh, a great time with with Aito uh, as our head coach for four years. Uh, normally, this is a period that uh, that uh, is not that long with Aito because in the last uh, clubs that he has worked, he works period more or less two years. So so we convinced him, and he was he was happy and ready to stay for us. Uh, with us for four years, uh, so it was it was very good. But at the same time, we know that uh, at some point Aito will need to rest a little, as he said, because uh, he he takes some time off, you know, to to you know due to his age, you know, sometimes he needs to slow down the the, the, the activity, uh, and that's the reason that we prepare uh, Israel Gonzalez as uh, assistant coach first that associate head coach uh, and now taking over the position uh, so it's uh, it's something that we have been preparing for for certain time um, and we are excited to to open this new chapter mm -hmm. um, you know him obviously from Gran Canaria days and um, mm -hmm. he is one of the very large group of coaches that has grown out of uh, Aito Garcia Renes's coaching tree if uh, we can put it like that. Um, can you briefly summarize how does he fit in the Alba Berlin um, mm -hmm. project and uh, program and his coaching philosophy? And uh, you know him all too well, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, uh, as, as you just mentioned, he has been, uh, he, has, he has been assistant coach of uh, uh, a lot of top coaches in Spain because he has been assistant to um, to uh, Pablo Lasso, to Luis Casimiro, to Pedro Martinez, um, and um, and the, the coach which uh, he spent more times it is uh, Aito, uh, and uh, the philosophy uh, that that he likes is is pretty similar like like Aito philosophy and that's the reason that he gets the opportunity to be a coach in Alba Berlin because um, uh, that's the philosophy that I want for this club okay so mm -hmm. so he he has a, a similar coaching style of of Aito mainly obviously he has a little and he obviously knowledge in the ball so so he's I think to to take this this challenge. So I guess uh, we are going to see um, more free flowing and um, um, more complicated defenses from um, Coach Gonzalez because we are accustomed to it by uh, Aita Garcia. He doesn't uh, uses timeouts very much, and he used sometimes very complicating um, box and one defenses or um, one two two defenses or two one two defenses. I guess. Yeah. Um, well, um, uh, the the main things uh, it will remain more or less the same. Okay. So the style of basketball, the way that that the, he will handle the you know, the situations and um, uh, how he will coach the games and the rotations and the, the structure, I think, will be pretty similar. But uh, but obviously, each person has their own personality. Okay. So. So Aito is unique in not calling the timeouts, for example, and uh, uh, and uh, I, I don't know if Israel will be that patient 
like Aito was, I think that's something that he gained with the, with the experience. Uh, so probably those kind of things will be will be different. Uh, but I think yeah, we will we will see a lot of uh, things in common. Uh, but obviously Israel would develop his own ideas and his own uh, yeah he will he will stamp you know his own philosophy in, in the team. Uh, but also obviously based in what we talk at the beginning, okay? So how, how we want to play and how we want to, you know, have a culture in this Alba Berlin uh, club. Mm. Okay, thanks. Um, so once again, congratulations. And uh, I hope you have a successful season with um, Coach Gonzalez. Let's talk about a little bit with um, the roster management. Um, mm-hmm. I think you had a kind of an exhausting summer and also... Um, I don't know. Are you uh, feeling a little bit sad about Niels Giffey, Peyton uh, Siva, Jason Granger, and Simona Fontek? You're gone, which mm-hmm. is the case like last season, because last summer you also lost many important players and mm-hmm. you managed to retain mm-hmm. the title of Bundesliga and you did a very good job. So how does it feel about uh, the situation yeah. for your side? Well, well um, I mean, you described pretty well. I mean, as uh, last last summer uh, we also lost six players uh, and the feeling was a little bit the same like this year sad uh, and um, and uh, a little bit let's say yeah I would say sad let's say okay so um, and and then rebuilding again the whole concept uh, but as you said we were able to to you know to win the title again in the in the Bundesliga and do better in the Euroleague, so and also play the final of the cup. So I think it was uh, it was a very very exciting and successful year. Uh, but now I feel the same, you know. So every summer, no matter how many times it happened to me in the, my career, is 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 again the same. It's, it's I feel after the summer a little you know sad because. So many players leaving, so many good players and especially good people uh, leaving, and um, and the pressure that um, uh, okay now we need to rebuild again to see if we are able to keep uh, to keep the level high, competing and trying to to win. Okay, um, and, and okay, it's it's difficult, you know. Now people say, okay, it happened to you last summer and we won, so we're fine. But it's not like that. Not every year is going to be like that. I mean, the, the thing is, um, I'm also very happy with the, with the players that we that we keep and and with the new players that we that we bring. I'm very excited about the the, the new guys. Um, but obviously, the team is now, let's say, younger and and inexperienced. Uh, but hopefully the the combination of Luke, uh, the players that have been here for years, like Luke or or JT, uh, I mean Timan, uh, you know this 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 kind of guys, the young guys that that you know that joined a couple of years, like Jonas, like Tim Snyder, you know. So hopefully we will have again a good combination, and 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 we will be able to to keep competing. Let's see. Okay, um, let's talk about a little bit um, with the new signings. Tommy Blatt is a big name. Uh, I mean, he was already uh, mm-hmm. a club's player. Um, he was on loan, but now he is going to hopefully play in the team. And Stefan Pena mm-hmm. also uh, turned back. And Jovan yeah. Zosman uh, also mm-hmm. um, joined the team. Um, could you give a little bit uh, mm-hmm. more information about the expectations of this player? Why did you choose them? Um, and Pena, is, is he going to stay? Um And um, with the other young guys like uh, Marta Delo, he's locked in also uh, with a new contract. Mm-hmm. And also, yeah. Uh, yeah. of course, Marta Delo mm-hmm. has resigned. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, let's just start for, for the last. I mean, Mauro was a guy that we that we could get last summer, and uh, it's somebody that uh, we're very happy uh, by by keeping him because we think that uh, that is a good fit for us. It's a Uh, we can help him to develop uh, his game, and uh, and he will be able to to also um, yeah help 
uh, Alba to develop the kind of basketball that we want to do. He represents the things that we want to that we want to do. So I'm very happy with with Mauro staying for for two more years uh, to get consistency. Um, then uh, Tamir Blatt, it's a player that that I signed uh, last summer and I kept uh, him on loan because. You know, the position last year was uh, full of, of good players with Peyton and with uh, Jason, with Granger, with Siga, right? Um, and, um, and I think it was, it was a good uh, decision for him to keep growing in a place where he has developed very well the last years in Kapol, Jerusalem. Uh, and, and he did well. He really, he really played a, a great season there. They did a, a great job uh, developing him. Uh, and I think now he's he's ready to come to us and try to to face the next challenge that is try to play uh, at the at the Euroleague level. Uh, but I'm very excited because we he has a lot of uh, the characteristics that we like in a pointer. Okay, so so I mean. He- he can he can pass the ball very well. He's able to to play very very good pick the ball to shoot the ball well. Uh, play with energy and defense despite he's not very big or athletic. So he's he's very intense and and those are the the things that we like. So so yeah, we think we're excited with him. Uh, then uh, regarding Stefan Peno, it's a it's a young guy that we brought. Uh, uh, four years ago, um, and he has been growing with us. He suffered a really bad injury in the knee, and he he missed one season and a half. Uh, so he, he has been out for almost two years. Um, and then last summer, uh, we decide that that um, that we believe in him, but he needs to first prove that he can play basketball uh, physically, okay? And that's the reason that we loan him to Fechta because Thomas Page was there, uh, the coach and a, and a former Alba coach, and we know him well, that he will work with him. So the main thing was to to check if he is able to, to yeah, physically to, to play basketball. The knee is good and everything. So when he proved that, it was, it was good. Obviously, um, he needs now to to recover his level of basketball. Uh, and this is something that we expect that expect that he can do during the season with us, uh, because obviously two years, almost two years without playing, and then uh, coming back in a in a difficult situation because Fexta had a, a tough year. Uh, it was not it was not the best for him uh, in terms of recovery the level of basketball, but. But we hope that he can he can do it. We want to give him the chance to to prove it with us, um, and uh, yeah, I think I think it will be good. It will be good. Then we have Jovel Susman, um, also um, a young talent coming out of Maccabi. So a player that uh, that uh, yeah, we expect him to. Um, uh, to be able to accept a bigger role than that the one that he had last year, because obviously Maccabi is a, is a top team full of talent, and uh, and he found his space, but it was more limited. Uh, and with us, he really need to take a step forward, uh, getting more responsibility in the, not only on defense where he's very good, but also in offense. Okay, so so he really needs now to work hard to. To, to take that responsibility and uh, but we are also very optimistic and excited because he's a great kid uh, and we definitely think he can be he can be a good player no. okay um, so we see um, a depth um, charts uh, that has so many young guards and shooting guards mm-hmm. um, but do you see any kind of an opportunity or any new additions on the horizon for the mm-hmm. other sports like um, the point forward position or um, the forward mm-hmm. position in general are they I know that it's mm-hmm. really hard for you to give any names I don't expect that although I will be yeah. really glad <laughs> but um, mm-hmm. are, are there any parts that you need to strengthen? Well, I mean, um, 
Yeah, I, I think. I mean, we're still um, looking for one more player. I think we need we need some somebody in the, in our guard position uh, that that uh, can help us with the with the rotations. I mean, we played eighty four games last season. Uh, and uh, there were times that we have a lot of guys injuries and, and not only that I mean we need to rotate otherwise the players will get injured uh, with, with more frequency so definitely uh, we want to add uh, another uh, outside player uh, it could be somebody in, 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 in positions uh from from one to three, I would say, because you know that somebody that complete the the, the back court because the front court I think it's pretty it's pretty uh, yeah it's pretty well let's say full so so we, we're still looking for somebody there and of course you know there's there's players that uh, that I like and players that have been following uh, players that uh, get a different let's say. Uh, opportunities and and timing was not very good. For example, you know, guys like like I don't know. It's it's uh, I think it's public that that we were following Dalton Holmes, uh, but he got a contract in the in the NBA and uh, and he wanted that. Um, there's some other cases like Mitch Chambirson, for example, is a guy that I've been followed for years, but he gets the opportunity to to go to to Fenerbahce and we were at that time we still have Fontecchio at that time then Fontecchio left so uh, different timings for for every situation and and we're in the market now checking on all the the best possibilities to to bring somebody in yeah okay um, before we get out this um, roster management issue I would like to ask also one more thing about player mm -hmm. improvement we saw Maldolo, um Obviously, he's not. Um, I mean, his main strength is not three-point shooting, uh, if we mm -hmm. put it like that. But we saw yeah. um, last summer in the Olympic Games uh, for German national team, he was um, not a bad um, three-point mm -hmm. threat. Um, but I think also we saw it, the parts of it in the regular season as well. Uh, is this? A plan, or is this is he is he encouraged to shoot more three pointers, and is he working on that, or is it just, it's just happens on the way, something that happens yeah. on the way? Well, we have um, apart from from the the pure philosophy of basketball that help the players to take uh, decisions on the court and in the in the games with more freedom, um, and that. Uh, immediately reflects, uh, or, or specifically reflects in the in the three point shooting because they are able to take better shots with more confidence and and you know, so they 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 improve that part. We have a whole uh, player development uh, program, okay? So that is led by our head of player development, who is Carlos Farade. Um, somebody that that uh, you know I think is is, is really the best the best in, in Europe doing that. So so um, it's 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 all prepared and and uh, it's all you know aspects of the of the game of the players that that uh, that we work with them, the plan it during the season at the same time that they practice with the team. Um, and you can see that you can see that as you mentioned in Mauro, you can see that in, in uh, since the beginning with Luke Sigma, that it was the the thing that they say, you know, and his career previous teams that he's not a consistent three point shooter, and since he's here, he's over forty percent or for sure a consistent three point shooter. Uh, and and you can see that with with all kind of of players like Simone, for example, from Tokyo last year, or or even uh, Josico Saibu when he was with with us, you know, Tima. this shouldn't be, yeah, Timan, you know, this these things that are that are really something that uh, that they work with with uh, player development and this combination of the. Of the freedom and confidence that the coaches give the players and how to take the shots and the individual work that Carlos do with with them is is paying off and and it's really improving 
the the players and and we're very happy because this is this is one of our main uh, goals okay um at this point i would like to congratulate you, you once more because this alba bellum organization is really unique in this um holistic approach with the young guys and the main team and at the elite mm-hmm. level we are talking about euro league it's like top um mm-hmm. level quality yeah. and um we see alba berlin started from scratch this project okay this project is not very uh, young but um it give another um mm-hmm. another chapter um and you rose from euro cup to euro league and now you have a two year uh, wild card euro league license so what are the challenges of um having a euro cup team and getting at euro league and being there for for a for a long mm-hmm. long time because it's really challenging yeah what are the challenges yeah. and how did you do no, that <laughs> Yeah, no, th- thank you, thank you. Um, it's true that, uh, um, okay, I, I had a plan when I came to Alba, and the idea was try to recover because obviously Alba is a club with a big tradition and also a big tradition of, of winning, also the tradition of playing EuroLeague. Uh, so, so, but in the last years, uh, before I came here, you know, so we lost a little bit this, this, uh, let's say a little bit the the the, the competitivity right uh, to be able to to win because obviously there's there's very difficult because some other uh, teams like Bayern Munich now and and Bamberg you know the teams Ulm you know so the teams like Oldenburg that that do the things work very well um and grow and yeah Ludwigsburg so so and um And and also some of those teams with with bigger budget like Bamberg or, or Bayern Munich and at that time, so so the plan was to try to be competitive again, uh, means to try to reach the semifinals, and then the next years try to see if we can reach some of the finals uh, in the league, and then in the Euro Cup if we are able to reach also you know uh, pass you know to quarterfinals or semifinals. Okay, so and then. The, the, the say the fourth year or something like that to be able to to really compete in the Euroleague again uh, and and try to win some uh, championship or some title okay everything happened earlier than that I expect okay so because the you know the second year of of Aito here um, uh, we we already play the final of the Euro Cup we play since the first year we play the you know the the final of the cup or the final of the league and and we play like nine finals you know since it was here okay but uh, but uh, also the plan was to try to do that with the philosophy that i want to implement in the in the club that means uh that we need to develop uh players you know we need to we need to do a better job in the in the youth program okay so that's the reason that, that we had Raul Rodriguez as a head of the of the youth program and um and he uh, start all the great job to to develop the the young guys and to improve the coaches uh to get the opportunity of give uh, young guys a possibility to play okay and and that's the reason that we have Tim Snyder that we have Jonas Matis that we have Frank Wagner that we have uh, um Maltedelo now able to to compete with the, with a team but doing that as you said at the same time that you compete for titles is is very difficult you know it's very difficult and we're very let's say we feel very happy and very proud of of that uh because it's very challenging um in has been a dream the last year so so now we need to keep doing a good job in order to to improve a little bit more with with this uh, philosophy of developing players with a basketball style that is attractive also for the fans uh, and at the same time compete against the the big powerhouses in, in Europe and in and in Germany the the whole good programs that are that are being developed here in Germany it's it's a big challenge this is the 
the let's say the main challenge right try to keep being competitive at the same time that you give opportunity to the to the young guys and uh, and then uh, yeah that that's the challenge mm-hmm. i understand that's a big challenge apart from the domestic league um targets aims um, is there a specific uh, aim for the euro league like playoffs mm-hmm. uh, is the club expecting that or just be more some little more competitive yeah. i mean uh, we we would love to be a playoff team compete in the playoff one day in the in the euro league that's something that, that that we set up as a as a kind of a goal and a, as a as a dream goal okay Uh, because it's not easy when you're uh, uh, probably the lowest budget in the Euroleague and uh, when you play with young guys, okay? So uh, when you limited yourself a little to to get this this achievement. Um, but uh, but we think that with work and perseverance and, and improvement, uh, we can get that. Obviously, uh, a big part of getting that is if we're able to keep the the team together this is what i always tell the the players i mean if you guys stay you know then we will be a playoff team okay because you guys will be better every year this is what we work every day and we add the young guys the new guys that will be better every day and every year and then we we, we have a let's say more possibilities uh but but anyway Uh, we were able to improve our participation in the Euroleague last year. Uh, so, so uh, this is this is the the way that we want to do it. So, uh, I don't know if we will be able to be a playoff team next year. Probably, maybe not. But what we want to do is is do a little better, okay, in the Euroleague. So, if we do a little better next year and the other year. Then that ended up being in a in a team that will be able to compete in the in the playoff, um, and yeah, this is a goal for us. Yeah. Okay, we are coming very close to the end. Um, just two last questions. <laughs> um, does this club um, use very specific scientific methods uh, in the preparation of the games? Because I know that you have a sports uh, science degree from uh, University mm-hmm. of Las Palmas, mm-hmm. if I'm not wrong. Mm-hmm. And we yeah. see um, Alba Berlin playing a free-flowing, but also academic type of basketball that this team knows what it's doing. So um, I think there's a sp- scientific approach. Um, that's how I observe. Mm-hmm. Well, um, um, I, I have to say that uh, that we have the the let's say the in. Uh, how can I say the, the the curiosity or the willing to learn and to be up to the new technologies and the new approach to the game. So we definitely uh, want to uh, check the data and, and want to really define if it's uh, possible to use different tools in order to to improve the way uh, we do the things or we take decisions. Okay, so. Uh, we are not too uh, extreme or too much into the advanced, let's say, stats in order to prepare uh, the games. Okay, so uh, but but we are a general, you know, very curious about all the things, and we try to analyze the the, the situations. Uh, but the coaches are the ones that that run the the whole style of of, of daily practicing and, and 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 play and the approach uh i would say is pretty modern and open uh but obviously it's based on on the approach of aito until now with israel as a, an associate head coach um, we we take a lot of consideration of our head of uh, uh performance okay that is pepe silva uh Uh, that, that coordinates all the performance and medical area in order to try to to approach you know the situation with uh, with a more professional uh, uh, let's say yeah uh, considerations um, and um, and yeah we try to integrate a little bit everything uh, but we are not much into 
uh, analysis of our, of the opponent, for example. Okay, so we're a team that uh, that focus in ourselves. Okay, we try to analyze our team a lot. So the coaches do a great job with analyzing videos of our own players individually and, and as a team and we work a lot on that on ourselves we don't we don't really do like a match of a scouting or preparation against uh, one opponent or the other obviously we do with the, with the coaches Sebastian Chonka the assistant doing, doing also that um, and uh, and we have also two young coaches helping with, with this preparation and videos uh, but basically, we do for ourselves. Okay, thanks. Uh, are there any injuries or any medical uh, things that are going on right now uh, during the preparations? Because your preparation is just about to start, I guess. Exactly. I mean, we're we have some players already in Berlin, and they're practicing. They're, they're doing voluntary uh, this whole player development, voluntary individual workouts, and and, and shooting and lift uh, weight weights and things like that uh but we will start on on saturday with with the whole team um not with the whole team because we were giving some time to the guys that were in the national team so they they, they join on monday so monday will be really our, our first team practice and so far you know everything is it's good they're just trying to get in shape and try to to get certain feelings some others are arriving now and so yeah, we're we're about to start in a, in a little while. Is Luke Sigma already there? I, I bet he is. <laughs> Who? Luke Sigma. Look, Luke is obviously a guy that uh, that uh, is coming now, but he's a guy that uh, that is a it's a key piece for us. Okay, it's a role model for the young guys. It's a it's a definitely a, you know a good example for for everyone. Because his commitment and and his uh, professionalism is is is, is unique, uh, and uh, we're very happy to to have him here. So yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, thank you very much, um, Mr. Ojeda. Um, we were with uh, Himar Ojeda, our Berlin Sporting Director. We talked about the new season expectations and um, the club ph philosophy uh, and um, some other things about Alba Berlin. Thank you for being our guest and I hope to see you uh, in near future and uh, I hope you have a nice and successful season without any injuries and very good results. Uh, thanks uh, Thank once again. You. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me and, and all the best for you guys too. Thank you.